What's up, family? God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Jesus over Jezebel, Jesus over Jezebel. We're exposing Jezebel part two. If you guys can hear me clearly, I want to see y'all put a fire emoji in the chat. Let's run up the fire emojis. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let's run up the fire emojis. I want y'all to start smashing that like button for real so we can get this live to as many people as possible so people can come out of the bondage of that wicked witch. Yes, Jezebel is a wicked witch. She's a wicked witch, and we got to expose her, man. Let me tell y'all something. The reason I can say I, I have I have the, the green light from the Lord to confidently expose this witch is because by God's grace and my discipline, I live a lifestyle of purity. I'm just being straight up and honest. I'm, I'm, I boast in Christ Jesus and what he, his grace, you know, allows. But again, it's discipline. Can y'all hear me loud and clear? I see someone saying, the audio is a little quiet or is it just me can you can you guys hear me loud and clear or is it is it is it quiet put a one in the in the chat if the if the audio is good if the audio is really good and it sounds amazing put a one in the chat so i know hallelujah king jesus amen okay it's a lot of ones we're good to go maybe it just might be that brother's um phone or whatever all right so let's get it in so again the reason that um that I'm able to expose the spirit is because I live a lifestyle of purity, right? By the grace of God and my discipline, right? Because we're not made like robots. God doesn't force us to do anything. We have free will. We have free will to make the decisions. God wants us to love him organically. God wants us to serve him organically. He wants us to sacrifice onto him organically. He does not force us to do anything. So when people say, let God's will be done on every situation, but they're not seeking the scriptures to see what God's will is for that situation. They're missing the mark. If you don't seek God to find out what his will is, he will not be able to reveal his will to you in the situation that you're going through. So if you guys are praying for a breakthrough in some area of your life, let me tell you something. The word of God has the answer to that breakthrough. The prayer you can ask god to reveal it to you but if you're just saying god let your will be done but you're not putting in any work you're not being disciplined you're not working out your salvation with fear and trembling you're not you're not laboring in the faith you're just depending on god to do everything for you even though god has given us dominion god god has given us free will god has given us authority why would god give us authority if we didn't have to use it if god was going to just do everything for us and we don't have to do anything no my brothers and my sisters we are soldiers on this planet and we are at war and we are fighting for souls i'm going to say it again we are fighting for souls yes you might be born again praise the lord if you're a born again holy spirit filled believer and i could i i'll be able to know by your fruit i can tell by your fruit if you're truly saved because you'll be transformed. You'll start to renew your mind by the word of God. Holy Spirit will start to, to bear good fruit in your life when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Just think about intimacy in a marriage, right? When, when, when two partners come together sexually, what happens? Fruit, the fruit of their labor. Children are born. So when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, fruit will begin to actually show. You'll begin to show for the fruit of the Spirit. The gifts of the spirit will begin to flow in you. Your, your character will begin to be refined. You'll have a desire to do godly things and turn away from ungodly things. You'll want breakthrough. You'll want to read the word. You'll want to pray. These things, they're, they're, there's going to be battles. You're going to feel sometimes like there's a battle. Guess what? In every season, there's a Goliath. Okay? But it's discipline and God's grace that come together, a partnership to allow fruit to be born. So with that being said, I'm confident in exposing this witch because I live a lifestyle of purity by the grace and my discipline of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He's given me the ability to do this. I have not watched porn since I've been saved and I'm not condemning anyone who has, all right? If you've watched porn and you've repented, you confessed it, you, you, God forgave you by his blood and it's wiped from the past. But I'm just saying I have not, fell to sexual immorality i'm faithful to my beautiful anointed 
wife who I love so much. We have three amazing children who are generationally blessed and anointed. So I will not allow the devil to mess up my family. So because I want, you, you know how I don't allow him to do it by depending on Jesus because in my own might and strength, it ain't going to happen. But what I do is I depend on the Lord. I seek the Lord. I pray to the Lord. I seek him daily. I hit the secret place daily. I, I have a lifestyle of prayer, an altar onto the Lord of just sacrifice daily of praise and worship. I don't miss a day. Every day I wake up, I always say, Jesus, I love you, Holy Spirit. Good morning. Let's get in. Let's, let's get this day popping. I hit that secret place. Um, um, I'm, I live a lifestyle of fasting and prayer, praying. I live a lifestyle of Bible reading. So <clears throat> this is what I'm trying to say. Some of you will say, oh, you, you can't do nothing. God has to do it. Yes, you can. The Bible says that we have free will. He's given us free will. For you to say it's all God, all God, all God, and you have to do nothing, you're a liar. That's not the word of God. You need to repent. You have to put in that work. Why does the Bible say work out your salvation with fear and trembling? Why do you have to endure to the end to be saved? Because the word of God is the is the holy scriptures that teach us what we have to do. So some of y'all have been, I'm going to be real with y'all. Some of y'all have been lazy and compromised in rebellion. And in deception of that wicked witch Jezebel, she's been lying to you, making you believe that it's okay to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend in Christ, to fornicate in Christ, to watch porn in Christ, that God's not tripping and you're going to make it to heaven. Let me tell you, the Bible says idolaters, drunkards, thieves, fornicators, aka those who watch porn who are fornicating outside of marriage, will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. The Bible would not say that if it wasn't true. You have a decision to make. Do you believe the word of God or are you going to believe your own word? Or how about this? Your own word, which was which is usually the word of the devil. The enemy will speak to your flesh to convince your flesh to create doctrines of devils to come in agreement. Why do you think the Bible says that many will give in the last days? Many will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Why do you think the word of God says that? And let me tell you something in this live stream. I know there's going to be many Jezebel spirits that manifest. I don't care. I'm going to preach against that witch. If this, if this message offends you, it's probably not offending you. It's probably offending that spirit that's lit, that it's inside of you that needs to come out. Um, we're going to get into a very powerful topic today. So I want y'all to stay on. Start spamming the fire emojis if you're ready. Start spamming the fire emojis if you know you need deliverance. Start spamming the fire, fire emojis if you're praying for the deliverance of someone you love, a family member, a friend. Start, stamp, start liking the video. Guys, we have Jesus over Jezebel shirts that we're actually selling on our website. We're going to attach it, the link to this chat, so you guys can check it out. And if you watch this live stream later, just go to our website. Also, um, this Saturday, my brothers and my sisters, this Saturday is going to be a mass deliverance. Tonight, I will be preaching on how to overcome pornography, lust, fornication. I'll be preaching this tonight for the midweek service. But this Saturday night, 6 30 p.m i want y'all to make sure you're there on time show up on time the line's more than likely going to be long show up on time get to the center get on time six, six i'll say six o'clock to be honest so you can get you can get in line get a nice seat look we have juices that are we, we have we have in the cafeteria we have not natural natural juices and and different things sea moss things that you guys can 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 purchase for sale good things for your body you know you can fellowship um, you could just hang out, you know, get, look at the merch and, you know, get your communion cup. We take communion every service, Tuesday and Saturday. Again, yes, we take communion every time we come together. We take communion, just like the scriptures say we should take communion in remembrance of him. So make sure you show up this weekend on time. If you've been thinking about coming. It's time. It's time to come. Get your plane ticket, get your Airbnb, get your hotel, get your rental car and come Receive your freedom from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is going to move powerfully. Not only will there be deliverance, I believe there's going to be supernatural healing. I'm going to be praying for healing. If you need healing from anything physically or spiritually, come through. I'm going to be praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many are going to be anointed and dude with power, praying in, the, in their heavenly language, activating their heavenly language. Many people are going to be baptized in water. If you know you need to give your life to Christ and get baptized in water, bring a change of clothes and a towel. We're going to be doing water baptisms. Hallelujah. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. So make sure you guys show up, 
You guys can check out the website. The address is there. You guys can check it out. Pull up. It's going to be a Holy Ghost party. Invite all your family and friends. We are preparing in the spirit through fasting and prayer for this week. We are preparing for this Saturday because we know it's going to be a very spiritual, spiritual night. So we're praying for against the mishaps. We're praying against any, 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 any attacks of the enemy to stop it because it ain't going to be stopped in the name of Jesus Christ. And we know that wicked witch Jezebel don't like to go to the pit. She don't want to come out. She wants to stay. Again, if anyone, I said this yesterday, if anyone tells you the Jezebel spirit, if anyone tells you the Jezebel spirit is not real, I would run from their teachings very, very fast. Very fast. The Jezebel spirit is a very real spirit. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 20, talks about, talks about the church at Thyatria and how he, they, they tolerated that Jezebel spirit who caused God's people to commit sexual immorality and to eat eat food sacrificed on the idols. We see this spirit so many times in the church. We don't see preachers and pastors preaching against sexual immorality. It's always something, wh whoever can get the deepest, whoever has the most revelation, or we see churches that whoever knows the Bible the most, but we don't see the elementary, the pure things. And that's why God is not sending certain people to these people's churches churches are falling or if they're not falling there's a whole bunch of witchcraft in the church and and and, and pastors are operating in a completely demonic spirit and i'm talking about pastors who in the beginning were pure but then as they got risen up for the fame and the money because they're of the fear of not making it of the fear of going back to poverty of the fear of whatever they start they start compromising and going to witchcraft this stuff is real in the church my brothers and sisters if you don't see your pastor or somebody that that, that you're watching online preaching against sexual immorality preaching against against pornography preaching against fornication and they never talk about it and it's all good and you can be up in the church boot up girlfriend boyfriend do your thing they 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 turn their they turn away from it don't worry man i would not be part of that ministry i'm gonna say that straight up i would not be part of that ministry because you know who's probably already in there the spirit of jezebel she's very deceptive let me tell you something the spirit of jezebel ain't trying to destroy the church in the physical she don't want the building to fall she don't want the name of the church to fall. She don't want the, the 501c3 to, 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 to be voided. She don't want the, 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 the AC and the lights and all that. No, she wants that to stay. But what she wants to do is turn the church out in the spirit. If she can have a church that represents God, right? A church that represents God in the physical, completely destroyed and perverted and perverse in the spiritual, she wins because then Christians will come there with a with a with a with a heart of I love Jesus, I want to seek Jesus, or I want to be saved, and they'll be taught from these false prophets and false teachers, and be deceived and under witchcraft, and won't be able to uh, to actually actually be in their destiny and calling. Some of the people go there with a pure heart. They get baptized. They give their life to Christ for real. But when you're under a demonic covering, you'll see in your life that nothing, you, you won't advance. You won't, you won't transform. You won't, your mind won't be renewed. You'll keep going back to that same mess. And because it's because you're not being fed. The devil wants the sheep to starve to death. The devil's not tripping. If you, if you, if, if you're born again and you're in the church and, and, and you just sit there and never learn anything, he's not tripping. You'll go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, always repenting, right? But if you never fulfill your destiny or your calling in Christ, that's still a W for the devil. Of course, he wants to rip souls. Look, we're supposed to be taking souls from hell, and the devil wants to take souls from heaven. I don't believe in this once saved, always saved false doctrine. I believe that we can forfeit our salvation if we decide not to believe again. It's very simple. The Bible says, what does the Bible say? John 3, 16. For God, for God loved the world, he gave his only begotten son for those who believe in him shall not perish, right? But have everlasting life. Everyone put in the chat, believe. I'm going I'm to I'm teach y'all something. Everyone put in the chat, believe. Put that, type that in the chat, believe. How many times in the past did you believe that somebody was your wife or husband? When you were in middle school and high school, some of you are in middle school and high school and, and you were fornicating or you had a crush and you had this whole vision of, oh, this is my wife, this is my husband, I'm going to marry them. And you believed it. You believed it wholeheartedly all the way. But then as time went by, either you dated them or maybe you didn't, found somebody else, you stopped believing. 
Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? So think about this. You can believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And then a few months from now, like Kanye West recently, right? What happened with Kanye? He stopped believing because God wasn't answering his prayers the way he wanted. You can believe and then not believe. And then people will say, oh, well, he never believed. What are you talking about? How are you going to say someone never believed? There's many things in our life that we believed and then we stopped believing. There's many times where we believe things and then we stop believing. That's why the Bible says you must endure to the end to be saved. If, it's very simple. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you turn away from repent, everyone put repent in the chat, put repent and you put repent in the and, and you repent of your sins and you and you turn to Jesus and you follow him. You're going to taste his goodness. You're going to grow and grow and taste more and more. He'll reveal himself to you more and more and you'll believe even more and more. Your faith will increase. But let me tell you something. I don't care if you've seen millions of miracles. The devil is deceptive. And I've seen the devil turn people out who, again, were pure in heart. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. I've seen, I've heard about stories and seen with my own eyes. I've seen men who were pure in heart, literally pure in heart with a true gift, true anointing, get turned out by the devil because they didn't get deliverance and healing. That's why when people say Christians can't have demons and they can't be oppressed in their soul, that 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 right there will lead people astray that will lead people astray into believing that, oh, I don't need prayer for deliverance for nothing. Uh, I just got to believe in my identity. Yes, your identity is important. That's defense. One hundred percent. But there's times where, you know, your identity, you believe in it, but you're still struggling with something. If that's been you, let's say, for example, you know your identity in Christ. If you know your identity in Christ, but you're still struggling with a, with a spiritual issue, still getting sleep paralysis, still falling back and forth, and you're so condemned and, con and convicted, all types of stuff. If that's you, I want you to put a one in the chat because that means you need deliverance. There could be altars and covenants. There's things that need a break in the spirit. You see, people don't like this stuff. They don't like revelation. They don't like supernatural Christianity. They want Christianity to be boring. They try to box God up. Yeah, right. You can't box God up. He's a God of mysteries. He can reveal what he conceals for his glory. What are you talking about? We seek him. He'll show us. He'll show us whatever needs to be shown. You can't box Yahweh up. He's always revealing new things. Hallelujah. So, yes, man, Christians can need deliverance. So today, again, I'm going to expose the Jezebel spirit part two. I'm going to be doing it every day this week leading up to the mass deliverance this Saturday. Make sure you pull up. It's going to be powerful. Um, come in person. If you can't come in person, come online. And as I'm praying for the mass deliverance in person, obviously it'll be online live streamed. You can just receive it wherever you're at in your house, your car, at work, whatever it is. And you can be delivered there too. I can't say I can fully focus on the live stream like I want to, but I will try to, like, to focus my attention on you guys for, for a good amount of time too. We are in Apopka, Florida. Just look at our website and you can find all the information. Look, I'm going to say this. If you want it bad enough, you'll seek and you'll find. It ain't hard. You guys, you guys know how to operate on the internet. Don't let the devil lie to you. Very simple. All right. So today I want to talk about Jezebel's husband, the Ahab spirit. We're going to talk about King Ahab. Let's talk about King Ahab. I want everyone to put in the chat Ahab. We're going to talk about this wicked king. This wicked, idol idolatrous king, this coward. You know, the Bible says that cowards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That cowards will end up in hell. But anyways, let's get into this. First Kings chapter 21, verse 25. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. I'm going to say it again. This is, this is what the Bible says. 1 Kings 21, 25, chapter 21, verse the 25th verse. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself. He sold himself. He sold his soul to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord. And why did he sell his soul to do wickedness? Why did he, why did he compromise? Why did he give in to wickedness? Because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. This man, a king of Israel, a king of Israel, was influenced by his wife 
to do wickedness. Ahab's willingness to embrace wickedness and the influence of Jezebel in his life is in the word of God. How many times? Let's talk about it. How many times have you guys ever seen a marriage or even a fornicated, a couple in fornication and you see them and the wife or the girlfriend runs the relationship and the man is just everything is whatever my wife or my girl says, I'm following her. Even though that's not how marriage is supposed to be. The man is the head, right? And the woman is the helpmate. This is biblical. But how many times have you, if you, if you guys have ever seen a relationship like that, I want you to put a one in the chat. And this is in Christ and even out of Christ, outside. I've seen it a lot. I saw it in the world a lot, right? You see the woman, for example, she'll constantly be running all over him, right? Bosses him around, tells him to shut up. Sometimes in relationship, you'll even see the woman beating the man, beat up the guy, slap him around. In conversations, he never gets to speak. She's always the one making the, the plans and doing everything, and he just got to shut up. It even gets deeper. The woman of God, or even woman of God, or even woman of the world, will cheat on will cheat on his on on, on her wife on, on his on will cheat on her wife or her husband. She'll be cheating on her husband. Tell her husband, "Hey, stay at home, watch the kids." How about this one? Stay at home, watch the kids. I'm gonna go to the to the the, the 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 bars and clubs with my friends, and the guy will stay at home watching the kids, cleaning the, cleaning the dishes and cooking and doing all the stuff that women are supposed to do. I believe in that wholeheartedly. I believe women take care of the home. Proverbs 31 10, go read it all the way to the end. But he's the one doing all that. And the woman is all up in the bars and clubs, all up in there looking all crazy and seductive, seducing men and have and 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 she goes and does her thing and then comes home and lays in the same bed. How many of y'all ever seen that type of relationship? Some of y'all are that are some of y'all are dealing with that yourself. If this is you right now, if you're a woman, if you're a woman of the world or woman of God, whatever, if you're a woman right now and you feel like you run the relationship in your marriage and you're controlling your husband and he and he everything like he, you literally can stir him up to do whatever you want. I want you to put a one in the chat because you're feeling convicted right now. And some of you might actually be mad at me. Some of you might actually be mad at me. And it's not because you don't like me. It's the spirit that's living inside of you. Put a one in the chat if you know that you're that type of woman, that you run the relationship, you run the relationship and your husband or your boyfriend is controlled by you because more than likely you need deliverance from a Jezebel spirit. All right. And be real with yourself. And this and this is even in Christ. Some of y'all in Christ and you don't encourage your husband. You don't submit to your husband. Everything is I got to make the decisions. I've seen I've seen it in Christ. I've seen it in Christ where the woman is the one who's super spiritual, who, who's, who that gives all the spiritual advice. She's the one that runs the relationship. The husband can't even, you, you'll see it. The husband can't even make a decision without saying, oh, what does my wife think about it? I got to make sure my wife says, okay. It's good to get wise counsel from your wife as a man. If, if you're, especially in Christ, that's okay. But the man is the one who makes the decision. You know how many times, let me tell y'all something. My wife is a whole prophetess, right? Prophetic. Gets a lot of dreams, all that. You know how many times I have to tell my wife no? She has discernment about something and I say no because God told me no. And my wife has seen how God will literally show me and not show her on purpose so that she'll humble herself. So many times. Now, there's been many times where God will speak to my wife. So who, who brings a dream, revelation, discernment to me, but make sure, I make sure I always go to the plug, the source, Jesus Christ. I don't ever just take my wife's advice and say, okay, I'm going to submit to you. No, I take what she says because I know she's a very powerful woman of God, but I take it to the spirit to confirm it. And, more, and almost every single time, the Lord will confirm it. But I've realized in my marriage that when I don't do that, because my wife, again, is a prophetess. She's very prophetic. When I start relying on my wife's advice, but I don't take it to the Lord because of laziness or because I'm doing too much work and I don't have and I, and I, and I, or I forget to ask God about that specific situation. God will sometimes allow me to mess up and say, look, you didn't pray to me about it to, to make sure that the that, 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 that the, the marriage is, is, is on point. Look, and I'm going to tell you all something. If you're in a relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend, you're already you are already in a whole operation of the enemy. 
you're already in a whole operation of the enemy if you're in fornication or you think that, oh, God, God allows me to have a girlfriend, boyfriend. No, he does not. That is not biblical. It is courtship. And you should be both of y'all should be saved. If you're dating someone who's not even saved, you're unequally yoked and you're already off. You should be getting confirmation from God. If that person is the person you're supposed to marry, you should be getting confir confirmation from God. God should have confirmed it through your pastors. You should you should have all your ducks in a row before you even, you even consider marriage. So please repent. All right, let's continue. First Kings 16, 31. And as if it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, he took for his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbal, king of the Sidians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. This verse exposes Ahab's complacency in following the sinful ways of the people from the past, right? And marrying Jezebel, a woman who worshipped false gods. So, you'll know that someone's operating in the Ahab spirit. For example, let's say a Christian. I'm going to give you all an example. You'll see a Christian and, and it, it, by the way, everything I'm saying could be reversed too. The man could have a Jezebel and the woman could have an Ahab. I'll, I'll actually give you guys that scenario. There'll be a woman of God in the church. She's newer in the faith. She's on fire, right? She's seeking the Lord. She got deliverance, but she just can't seem to let go of her boyfriend. She knows it's wrong. She can't let go of it. He's constantly in her ear. But then you talk to her and you ask her, he cheats on her regularly. He's beat her. They had, they had a kid out of wedlock, all types of wild stuff. This man don't want to submit to God. He's controlling her. Everyone put control in the chat. You'll see it. It could be man and woman too. He's controlling her. She, she's so bound to him. She's truly seeking the Lord. She's, she got delivered. She got baptized. She's praising the Holy Ghost. But this man seems to control her. He don't come to church. I've seen this scenario so many times. He don't even come to church. Oh, how about this? He'll come to church, the service one time, sit in the crowd and just be quiet and just come for her and say, I just came for you and just stay there. Once deliverance starts breaking out, looking all scary. Oh, shoot, this is real. But never comes up for deliverance. Never gives his life to Christ. But then comes to the church just to watch and observe. I came to the church, though. If they were going to cast a demon out of me, they would have came out, right? No, that's not how it works. You have free will. If you don't want these demons to come out of you, they ain't going to come out. They, they don't got, they don't get an eviction notice if the legal right ain't broken. So if you, if, if you're, if you're in that type of, look, woman of God, if you're in that type of relationship right now where you're dating a guy, because some of you are already in rebellion, you're dating a guy who controls you, cheats on you, uses you, abuses you, even mess with your friends, mess with all these people, lies to you constantly. I want you to put a one in the chat. Because my sister, you are getting Ahabbed out. You are Ahab and he is Jezebel. You are under witchcraft. You are literally under witchcraft. He is controlling you. He got you on lock. And the reason this is happening is because you're already in rebellion. Because you're in fornication. You're dating a guy you shouldn't be dating. You shouldn't even be dating, period. You should be married to Jesus Christ. And some of y'all, I see someone saying, my husband is everything you just explained. Hey, some of y'all might be married already. And he controls you. Look, you are operating in an Ahab and he's in a Jezebel. He does all these things bad to you. He's beaten you. He's yelled at you, really verbally abused you. He's done all types of stuff, but you just can't seem to get out of it. You don't even know why. You just keep on going back to him. He's the worst of the worst. He's terrible to you, but you just keep on going back. He's all up in, for some of y'all younger people, he's all, or even older, he's all up in the streets in the clubs, and the bars, he'll tell you, hey, I'm going to the club and the bar just to hang out with my friends. How about that one? I'm just going to hang out with my friends, and you're at home praying to God, God, please protect them, God. And he's over there. You know what he's doing, woman of God, or even vice versa, man of God? In the club, cheating on you. Dancing with girls, dancing with guys, having a great time because, you, because you're, in an, you're, you're Ahabbed out. You're Ahabbed out. Yeah, you know what you need to do if you're if you're if you're look, look I'm gonna tell you this if you're in a girlfriend boyfriend relationship that's grace on your life leave run cut it off be done completely some of y'all gonna say oh it's so hard look it's up to you you got free will you can get delivered this Saturday and be done I'm telling you right now my advice to you is 
you cut them off. I'm talking about you dead them. Like, bye-bye, never talking to you again. And you just pray for them. If they're meant to be yours, it'll happen. God's in, all, in full control. God, God, you pray and you say, God, if that's supposed to be my wife or my husband, let it be so. If it's supposed to be your husband or your wife, it'll happen. They'll get saved. But if you're dating somebody and they're not even saved, you're already in rebellion and you're letting it. You're, you're, you're just, what you're doing is you're saying demons come and come and live inside of me. You're saying demons come and kill me and destroy me. Think about I'm going to give you a revelation. Why do you all always think about like, you know, you know, you know the saying when a good a good girl go, is gone, is, is goes bad. She's gone forever. Y'all yeah, know that saying, right? You know what that is? It's a woman who's ahabbed out by a man. Gets cheated on, cheated on, abused, abused. Then one day, you know what she says? Forget this. And she she manifests in pride. And guess who she allows in? The same spirit that's been tormenting her. Jezebel. And now she gets turned out. Starts dressing all crazy. Starts cheating on him. She's all up in the clubs. She's going crazy. And then what usually happens? And then the man who was once controlling the relationship. Now it swaps. And now the man is crying, right? How many of y'all had that relationship? <sighs> he comes to your doorstep. Please forgive me. And the girl is so cold hearted. She even likes it. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah. And now the girl got a whole, a whole, a whole rotation of five guys and she's controlling them. She got this guy she's sleeping with. This guy who she just calls for emotional uh, for him to, t to tell her she's amazing. This guy who pays for her stuff. This guy who takes her to, to eat dinner and stuff. She got a whole operation. That's a Jezebel spirit. Now she goes from the Ahab to a Jezebel. Until she meets another Jezebel spirit that's stronger than her. And then that Ahab spirit in her, because you could have a Jezebel and Ahab at the same time, will manifest. And now she she loves this guy after five, six years of, of, of doing her thing. Now she's, oh, I love him so much. But now she's getting Ahabbed out again. This is how people commit suicide, go crazy and murder. This is how. And, and then you know what Jezebel loves? I'm going to give you a revelation. You know what Jezebel loves? She'll, she, she wants children, right? Because she's, she's the unhusbander. She wants you to get pregnant with children and kill your baby. If you've had a bunch of miscarriages, right? If you, if you have these irregular periods and, and crazy menstrual cycle things and, and all that stuff, more than likely, I'm not saying every time, more than likely, it's a Jezebel spirit. She's the unhusbander. She loves to take, she loves to take people's children and sacrifice them onto Baal. That's what Baal worship was. Sacrificing your firstborn child onto a demon. So when, and also whenever you see, whenever you see like a woman who's constantly getting abortions, guess what, guess what that abortion clinic is? It is, it is literally a temple of Baal. That's what Planned Parenthood is. A temple of Baal. You'll talk to a woman, she got six, seven, eight, nine abortions. Like, bro, like, when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? Sacrificing her children onto demons. Every time she does it, she empowers that Jezebel spirit to get even worse and get even worse. And get. And yes, it could be Molik, Ashtar, all that. Yes, but bow worship too. It was in all types of pagan worship with, sac with sacrificing your children onto these deities. And she gets worse and worse. And then that's how they get. That's how women get sick and get all these types of cancers and all types of crazy stuff. That is a Jezebel spirit who wants to use her to wreak havoc in people's lives and then kill her. If right now this resonates with you, if you're feeling like I'm speaking to you right now, some of y'all feeling like this, I want you to put a one in the chat. I'm going to count up the ones, depending on how many there are. There might be too many. If this resonates with you and you're like, bro, this is crazy. Like. I, I I feel like I'm like I'm in one of these categories. I want you to put a one in the chat. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. That is a lot of ones, and it's still going. Twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. It's still going. Right, right, right. About thirty now. Look, my brothers and my sisters. It's very simple. If you want freedom, you're going to have to repent. You can't come to God and say, God, um, just make everything better and that's it. No, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to today. I'm not saying tomorrow. I'm not saying in a week from now. Today, like during this live stream, some of y'all got to cut off your boyfriend and girlfriend. Some of y'all right now are feeling like I'm speaking to you. 
This is your this is a message from God to you. Prophetically, I'm speaking to you, man and woman of God, even for the ones that watch it when it's posted. If this resonates with you, it's a prophetic word from God straightly straight from the courtrooms of heaven, straight from the throne room of grace, straight from heaven, straight to you, man and woman of God. God wants you to end that relationship because you're, you're in rebellion. He has a husband and a wife prepared for you. And you need it. You need it. You need to get right and prepare for that for that person that God truly wants for you, who's going to love you, not control you, who's going to going to encourage you, who's going to have children with you, who's going to have you're going to be generationally blessed. Some of y'all, let me tell you, I'll, I'll take it even deeper for the person that's like, I think this is me, but they're not sure. Your mom dealt with the same thing. Your mom dealt with the same thing. Your mom went through divorces and separations and breakups, abuse and miscarriages, abortions. Your mom went through all this stuff and now you're you're going through it and you're wondering why. It's a generational Jezebel that has been passed down to you and it needs to be casted out of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And some of you are married right now. You're married to a man who's constantly might be beating you, cheating on you. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the only means for divorce is sexual immorality. So if they cheat on you, you have the right to divorce them. If God tells you to do so, he wants you to forgive. He wants you to hopefully forgive and pray for them and wait until you, you really, really know it's the Lord telling you to the Lord encouraging you to divorce them. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of you are living with them. You're living, you're living in a relationship with a man or a woman who's cheating on you, abusing you, all this stuff. And you feel like you're Ahabbed out, right? What you need to do is separate. Separation is better than divorce. You need to separate and live somewhere else. Go live with your with somebody else, your, your, one of your friends. Your, make sure they're a believer too. Go get your own apartment. And some of you might have kids. Take your kids. Some of y'all might need to get a restraining order. Some of y'all might, might, might need to do it with wisdom the right way because things are getting real in the field. And again, some of y'all are saying, oh, like, like I, see one, I see someone's Tina saying, my boyfriend isn't a cheater or abusive. Sister in Christ, God bless you. Your pastor might never, if you have a pastor, might never tell you this. You need to repent because you're already in rebellion. That relationship is not ordained by God. I'm going to say this again. It needs to be confirmed by God through, through, through God. God will confirm it in many ways. And it, when it is confirmed, you're not, you're not just dating to date. There's the, the, the kingdom of God is not the world. We don't just go, oh, I like you. Oh, you're cute. Let me just date you and be exclusive. No, that's a soul tie. You're claiming somebody without marriage. You're literally, you know, you know what you're doing? You're putting up your middle finger to God and saying, God, you know, forget your covenant of marriage. I'm going to create my own covenant and I want to date them. Let's be loyal to each other. Let's love each other. It ain't loyalty and it ain't love. It's lust. What you need to do is tell that guy, hey, if he saved brother in Christ, I'm your sister in Christ. We need to chill out. We need to seek God. We need to fast and pray. We need to find a church. We need to get submitted to a church. We need to grow in the faith so that we can prepare for marriage. If I'm supposed to marry you, it'll happen in the future. If you're supposed to marry me, it'll happen in the future. If not, God will reveal it. But right now we cut this off. We seek God and we wait until God reveals. That's what a real one, a kingdom step is going to do. See, that, that's why the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. That's why the Bible says the, 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 that the path to heaven is narrow, but the path to hell is broad. It's wide. Jezebel is running. She is out of control, bro. She is all up in the church. She is all up in the world going ham. She's going ballistic. She's convincing people. Think about how deep she's gotten. She's convincing young kids that they can be whatever gender they want. I think there's like a hundred different um, gender identities or whatever. Now you can tell someone I'm a he, she, it, or when, what, A, B, C, D. You can, you can literally say whatever you want and, and people have to say, okay, I respect that. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? A little girl can say, I'm a boy, daddy. I'm a boy daddy. And if the, and if the, and if in certain states and cities, if the father says, no, no, honey, you're a female. Don't say that again. And gives her a little spanking. He'll get arrested and go to prison because he he's abusing her verbally because she has the free will, the free will and the right to say whatever she is. That's the same spirit that's operating in your girlfriend, boyfriend relationship. You keep playing around with God. It's not going to end up good. Go talk to some old, old heads. 
Some of y'all old head, old heads in here, right? Older, right? I'm an old head. I'm about, I'm about 34, right? I'm older. Go talk to the older people who've been there, done that in their 30s and 40s. They'll tell you, yo, he's, he's telling the truth. Because at 18, 17, 21, 23, you think you got it. You think everything's sweet and everything's candy land because you ain't seen what could happen through this iniquity. But that's how you see all these baby mamas, baby daddies. You see all this crazy, crazy things on the news. The, this guy murders this one and this one commits suicide, all that stuff. Because what do you think Jezebel causes? Bow worship. What did bow worship? What did, what did bow do? Cause people to cut themselves. Human sacrifice. Keep playing around with these demons like they're not real. And you're going to see what happens in the next few years. I'm keeping it real with you because I love you. I would tell my own sons and daughter the same thing when they get older. They, they're going to know. My children are going to see demons casted out their entire life. They've been seeing it. My sons pray. My, my, my sons literally pray for deliverance. My son can see in the spirit. They already know why they shouldn't be doing certain things. It's just like me telling you don't smoke weed, right? I could be that, that parent that says, or that, that pastor that says, don't smoke weed. It goes against the word of God. Repent, right? Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. But let me take it deeper. Don't smoke weed because you're accessing the spirit realm illegally. It's a psychedelic and you're allowing demons to enter you. And that's why you're paranoid, fearful, angry, prideful, murderous. That's why you're having sleep paralysis. You see, I can, I can actually explain to you why. So that at least if you decide to keep doing it, when it continues to happen, you'll have that seed planted in you to say, oh, shoot, I need to stop. I'm tripping. Yeah, I saw that. Someone said on the news, kid claims she's a cat. Request litter box at school. I've seen that. That's crazy. Little girls and boys can identify as animals now. It's crazy. And you talk to certain people, they say, stop judging. The Bible says do not judge, bro. I'm going to judge righteously. If you're with me on this and you want me to continue, and I'm going to continue no matter what, but if you're with me on this and this is encouraging you, I want you to put a fire emoji. Come on, run it up. And again, we got the Jesus. We're going to keep exposing this witch. Jesus. Let me move that microphone. Jesus over Jezebel shirts online for sale. You can go to our website. This is literally Jezebel getting casted off of the balcony and fed to the dogs. I love it. I love it. Man, if I was still in the world, I'd get this tatted on my, I'd get it tatted on my forehead. <laughs> if I was still in the world. I would get Jezebel. If I if I if I had a revelation of Jezebel and that, that who, how wicked she was in the world when I was when I was getting yatted up, when I was still in the world getting tatted, I would have got that thing tatted on my face. Jezebel getting thrown off a balcony because I hate that witch. Let's continue. All right. So first Kings 21, 15. All right. Hey, guys, I want you all to do this real quick before we continue. How many? Let me see. How many, let me go on the live stream on my phone. How many likes we at? Let's see. Hold up. I'm applying that pressure. I got to go get it. I got to go get it. I'm applying that pressure. I got to go. Hey, we're at 282 likes. Come on. Let's run. Hey, let's get it to 500. Start. Hey, just guys, just right now, stop what you're doing is like the live stream. What it does is it breaks the algorithm and allows more people to see it live. That's the, that's the goal. I want people to see it live. I'm going to say a prayer at the end too. Don't get off. I'm going to pray for y'all at the end. Don't get off. All right, just smash the like button real quick. Let's run it up. Smash that like button. Let's run it up. Let's run it up. We got more coming in. More shirts coming in. If we, if, you know, if if you if you want to go grab some other shirts, we got some demon killer shirts on there. We got profit. We got power. We got Jesus is king. We got different shirts. We got some new ones coming in. So just bear with us on certain sizes. All right. So let's talk about 1 Kings 21.15. So it was when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Here we witness how Ahab allows Jezebel to manipulate and control him, control him using her cunning, for, her cunning to fulfill their selfish desires. Look, this is what happened. There was a guy right in the Bible. His name is, was uh, Naboth, the Jezreelite. He had a vineyard, right? This is the, it's actually the same vineyard right here. Same, same, the same vineyard. He had a vineyard. And Ahab, the king, wanted to buy it from him. Offered him money. 
This is the king of Israel. He can get any vineyard he wants. But the, but Naboth, is the Jezreelite, this man, he was like, no, I don't want to sell it. It's part of my inheritance. He wanted to pass it down to his children. He got it. He probably got it. Actually, I know he got it from his parents. He didn't want to sell it. No amount of money could buy it. And Ahab got butt hurt. Boo hoo hoo. He literally started crying and didn't eat for days because he was butt hurt that he couldn't get the vineyard. He was spoiled. He was he was he was he was he was selfish, entitled. You see a lot. You you'll see a lot of Ahab people. People that have the spirit of Ahab, they're very entitled and spoiled. So he was so he was very like hmm. I want that vineyard. And what did Jezebel, his wife, do? Don't worry. I got you. She wrote a letter. And she she said she used his name. So she wrote, she wrote a letter on his behalf as the king of Israel to the, the governors, to the leaders of Israel. And lying about Naboth and how he went against the king of Israel and how he went against Israel, blaspheming God, like blaspheming them and everything. She, she lied about him so that they, they arrested him and killed him. And then after she got him killed, she said, don't, don't worry. Like I said right here, like I, like I read in the verse, don't worry. He's, he's dead now. Go ahead and take the vineyard from him. So she murdered a, a, a man, a man of God, by lying to take what he had. You know how many times people do that? When if you're in a relationship where you have someone that controls you and manipulates you to lie and do deceitful things, I'll give you an example. Credit card scamming. Some of you might have a boyfriend or girlfriend who believes scamming is okay or selling drugs is okay or they, they, they're, they're cutting corners to make, to, men, to make ends meet. They rob, they steal. This is a Jezebel spirit at work. You don't even want to do it. You're not even about that life, but they're convincing you, oh, just do it. It's okay. It's a way that we can get over on the government. It's a way that we can, we can make money, right? They, 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 just, they just can't stop doing it. They just keep on trapping, keep on scamming, keep on, man, it gets deeper, it, 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 it gets even deeper to prostitution. Whenever you see prostitutes, they're operating in a Jezebel spirit and an Ahab spirit. The Jezebel spirit will manifest to, 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 to do sexual things with people for money. And then the Ahab spirit will be, will, will literally be Ahabbed out to that pimp. That's all I'm saying. Y'all got to be careful out here. Jezebel going crazy. This is the answer to a lot of y'all questions, man. So let's talk about what Ahab spirits love. Number one, fear. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Ahab's fear-driven -driv actions contrast with the courage and boldness displayed by those who trust in the Lord. Whenever you see an Ahab spirit, they get, they're very fearful. And let me tell you something. I feel this prophetically for somebody on this chat. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You want to marry a guy. You're in Christ. You want to marry a guy who just keeps ma manipulating you and controlling you and toying with your emotions. Won't marry you. Always messing with you saying he will, then he doesn't. He will, then he doesn't. And you're always in fear and always, always in condemnation. Always, always hurt. My sister in Christ, you are dealing with an Ahab spirit and you are in, you are enslaved to a Jezebel spirit. If you got a guy in the body of Christ toying with your emotions, God's already confirmed that you're supposed to marry him. He's supposed to marry you. And he's just messing with you back and forth and back and forth. Always looking for attention from other women. I feel this prophetically for somebody. Listen to me. Always looking for attention from other women, younger women, older women. Loves the attention. Doesn't mean they're having sex with them, but wants the attention. Even though you're right there, loyal to them, sold out for them, love them. Being tormented, always being toyed with your emotions. My, my sister in Christ, you are Ahabbed out. You are Ahabbed out. You need deliverance. What you going to do about it? You have a decision to make. What you going to do? You going to keep on getting Ahabbed out? Or are you going to boss up in the spirit and say no and cut that cord, that soul tie and say, I'm straight. That man, that man, he don't even know what he's missing. And you, you lock in with the Holy Ghost and you, and you wait for the Holy Ghost to reveal someone else to you. Because I'm telling you, he will. God already got someone. God, God, God is all powerful. He got someone else. If the man, if that man don't want to, don't want, don't want to break those altars and get delivered and wants to keep on playing around. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Don't wait on him. Don't wait on him, woman of God. Don't do that. 
You're always crying. You're always going through it. You're always being tormented. Bro, what type of lifestyle is that? What type of lifestyle is that? We got to get over this stuff, man. We got to let we got to rebuke that spirit, those spirits. Rebuke that they have in Jezebel's spirit for real. Some of y'all need to boss up in the spirit and, and, and just know that God is my husband. And that's man and woman. God, you're my husband. You don't want this for me, God. He doesn't. Some of y'all in that relationship or whatever's going on in a marriage or whatever, getting toyed with, and you think that, oh God, oh, this is this is I'm married to him or I'm courting him and this is what you want. No, God does not want that for you. That's why he's giving you the word of God to get your way out of that. Separate, pray, wait. Lock in with the Holy Ghost, fast and pray. It's going to be hard. There's going to be warfare. You're going to go through it. You're going to have feelings attack. That is a spirit attacking you because that spirit, I'm going to tell you something. Listen to this one. This is a good one. Whenever a Jezebel loses grip of her Ahab, right? The spirit loses grip of the Ahab spirit. She goes crazy. Because the only way a Jezebel spirit can be empowered to operate is through an Ahab spirit. Jezebels are always looking for Ahab spirits. That's why when a man or woman in the world, right, has a Jezebel spirit, they'll have like two or three girlfriends, boyfriends, right? They'll have a bunch of people on deck and not necessarily having sexual, you know, intercourse with all of them. But she, but that spirit just wants to be empowered, enjoys when the woman or the guy loves them so much and but she can control them like I know you love me, but I'm going to control you and I'm not going to be with you. I'm telling you this because I used to be like this. I was operating in a Leviathan and a Jezebel when I was in the world in the world. I used to have women controlled. I used to manipulate them. I used to be prideful. I used to be arrogant. I used to be murderous. I had a, I had I had two master spirits operating in me. I had to get delivered. I'm telling you all stuff I know from firsthand. And I remember there was only one time where I met a spirit and I, and I know now in Christ where I met a Jezebel spirit who was stronger than I was in a woman. And I'll never forget this girl. I'll never forget how, how, how demonic it was. And I found and I, I knew I didn't really know until I came to Christ. She was a whole full blown witch. She had a whole bunch of witchcraft stuff in her in her room. But at the time I wasn't in witchcraft, so I didn't really know. But it was a master Jezebel. I mean. I remember she used to say she had she was talking to guys and I would tell her I'm talking to girls, but she wouldn't be tripping. And it was a girl from the Bronx, Oof. the Bronx, the boogie down, dirty Bronx. And I remember, man, I used to be like, man, why do I like this girl so much? And I had a whole I was living with a girl. She even knew I was living and dating a girl. But I used to always just I, I, she, she, she wasn't like all that to me. It was she didn't she didn't have nothing to offer, really. But I just really wanted to like I liked her a lot. Like I want and like and I would get so revengeful and I would get so like and she would get revengeful. It was like it was so toxic. It was like our Jezebels were going crazy. She had even got her name tatted on on her. I mean, she had got my name tatted on her and everything. I had to break that covenant in the spirit. It was crazy. It was manipulation, bro. It was demonic. And when I came to Christ and God revealed to me different deliverance ministry and different spirits, I was like, wow, that was crazy. That's the only woman that ever like made like, 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 like controlled me like for a season for a little bit. But my Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit that I used to deal with was crazy mature. It was generational. I'll just put it that way. That's what I'm saying, man. This stuff is real. Some of y'all not saved and you need to get delivered and saved because I'm telling you right now, it only causes chaos. I remember when I remember I had left overseas in the military. I remember I went to um, I went to the uh, to, to Greece. So I had left I had left um, Jersey and I went to Greece to be stationed and, and we had cut things out. I remember I was so depressed, bro. I was like, why do I like this girl so much, bro? Why am I so depressed? She probably was doing a whole bunch of witchcraft. But I remember I was like, bro, this is wild. I was so depressed. I remember that. I remember that. That was crazy. I'm telling y'all, some of y'all saying your moms and your mother or father might be dealing with it. They probably are. You need to pray for them. What's another, um, I would say, uh, thing that Ahab spirits love? Entitlement. We know that Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. 
This verse reminds us to reject the self-centeredness and entitlement that characterized the Ahab spirit. Ahab in the Bible was extremely entitled. He would constantly be like, we like looking to, to overpower Elijah. He tried to go out. To, he tried to go to war with Elijah. He would meet. He would meet Elijah face to face. And 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 Ahab hated Elijah because he was a seer. He was a prophet. And every time he saw Eli, every time he saw Elijah, he got she was shaking his boots. Elijah made the rain stop for years. Elijah slayed all the false prophets. So Elijah was a G in the spirit. He was he was a real man of God. And King Ahab hated him. Self-centered. Was pissed off when the rain stopped for that for that. I think it was seven years. Was pissed off. Pissed off. Victimhood is another characteristic of the Ahab spirit. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. We know this, Hebrews 14, 16, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to, to, to help in time of need. Ahab spirits have the victim mentality. I'm going to say it again, the victim mentality. I'm going to say this prophetic. They're always crying about something that somebody, like some, some, somebody hurt them in some type of way. They're always crying, like always victim. Oh, always complaining. Everyone's against me. Everyone wants to hurt me. Everyone wants this. Everyone wants that. Everyone. That's an Ahab spirit. How many of y'all know somebody like that? Always the victim. Always. And it's like, and I've seen it in Christ where I tell them, I tell them, you know, woman of God, man of God, just, you know, you're getting hurt by this person. Just cut them off or this situation. Just stop doing it. Like. And they just somehow can't stop doing it. They keep on doing it, going back to the same Jezebel, going back to the, the situation. And you're just like, bro, it's like it's almost like they want to go through that. Like it, it, it empowers that spirit to keep on going. That's an Ahab spirit. Le paramando. Some of y'all feeling convicted right now. I can feel it by the spirit. Le palabaso. You need to be on this live stream. Don't get off. immaturity when i was a child i spoke as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things first corinthians 13 11 ahab's desire for cut like he likes to coddle coddling if you know what that means reflects an immaturity that needs to be transformed and embracing responsibility and maturity whenever you meet a, someone that has an ahab spirit they can be 40 something years old and they're just so immature like they don't catch it it's like Man of God, woman of God, the Lord is saying this. Why aren't you changing? Oh, I don't know. It's just I'm going through so much. And it's like, you're like, bro, what the heck? They don't know how to just boss up in the spirit. Like they don't have that zeal or that drive to seek God, to get in his word and break out of this. Whenever you see someone stuck in immaturity, they just always like how many of y'all ever had that friend? Right. And I'm, I'm saying this for um for woman of God. Right. You know, you had that friend who just always kept going back to that ex. And you're sitting there, listen to this, and you're like, sis, stop. That person's controlling you. You need to be out of that relationship. You need to seek God and wait for your husband. I know. And you're just like, stop crying. Like, why do you keep going back to him? Stop. Okay. Okay, I'll stop. How about this? I'm going to say this prophetically. Stop texting him and stop calling him and see what happens. Okay, I'll do it. A week later. You texted him, didn't you? Yeah, I texted him. This is for somebody. And you, and you get pissed off and you're like, bro, sister in Christ, I just, I just preached to you, counseled you for like four hours, poured out my heart, prayed for you for deliverance and everything. And you still went back to this guy? I've seen that too many times, bro. And it's, it gets it gets so annoying because they don't want to give it up. They're in rebellion, bro. If the Lord is telling them to do something and they don't do it and they don't take the counsel, they're in rebellion. And they literally are. In, they, it's like they want the witchcraft. There's no demon stronger than Yahweh. They're trusting in that person, idolatry, more than they're trusting in God. That's idolatry. And sometimes you just got to separate yourself from that person and let them continue to go through it. And hopefully they catch it. Just pray for them in the secret place. God will God will move. I don't know. Sometimes it takes people years. 
I've met people who have been in relationships for like 20, 20, 30 years, bro. 15 years and still can't catch it. Still can't catch it. I'm telling you, it's real. Another one. This is good. How many of y'all know somebody like that? Be real. Put a one in the chat. How many of y'all know somebody like that? You're always counseling them like, come on, just, just be alone with the Lord. Consecrate yourself. And they just don't. They just keep going back to that same person. Be real. Be real. Yep, I got to give these gems, V. I got to say it. I love I love y'all too much to not say this. That's a lot of ones, bro. It's a lot of Ahabs that need to, spirits that need to come out of people and people need to boss up. I'm going to tell you something. You can get delivered from that Ahab and if you go back to that Jesse, it's going to be worse. You got to make a decision and say, I'm done. You got to make a decision and boss up and say, I'm done. Two things going to happen. That person who got the Jezebel going to get delivered, freed, and then you, I would say, give it some time and let them be in the Lord and see if there's actual fruit and they'll bear fruit in it and then you can consider. Or, you God got somebody completely different waiting for you that's 10 times better because they're going to love you like, like Jesus loves the church. This is, for the, this is for the woman of God. This is a gem for you. For the, this is a gem for this woman of God. God has somebody waiting for you and I feel like people have already told you this before, but you just keep going back to the same guy. And God is saying, let go and be done. The next thing that, that, that Ahab spirits love is emotionalism. Proverbs 16, 32 says, he who is slow to anger is better than he than the mighty. And he who rules the spirit than he who takes the city. This verse encourages us to exercise self-control over our emotions in contrast to Ahab's tendency to be swayed by feelings. Whenever you meet someone that's dealing with the Ahab spirit, I'm going to say it right now. They're always crying about things that are bad. It's okay to cry in Christ. God wants us to cry about his goodness. God, you're so good. You're so loving. You're so amazing. I love you. And you cry. Okay. And worship. Okay. But if you're constantly crying, about the bad, the same bad situations all the time. Anything bad happens, you crying. You know, it's just like, bro, why are you crying all the time? Like, it's yeah, it sucks, but you should trust in God and control your emotions. That's that's what this this verse says. Proverbs sixteen thirty two. How many can, how many y'all in this chat can say that's you? Put a two in the chat. If you're that person who's always crying about bad things and you just can't seem to control your emotions, put a two in the chat. Put a two in the chat. You need it. You, you need to write down this verse. You need to write down Proverbs 16, 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules the spirit than he who takes the city. You need to write it down. And, and someone said, what about anxiety? Anxiety is a demon. That's a spirit of anxiety that needs to come out of you. People will say it like, like look, I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. I believe in the supernatural power of God. I've been delivered from anxiety. I didn't have to take no drugs or go through counseling or none of that. I just commanded that spirit to come out of me. I, I declared the word of God over my life and renewed my mind. And it didn't come back. J.S. Wilson says, so are you saying a, Hose a Hosea situation is a special case? I think if you commit marriage and they run off and do their stuff, you can still have grace to love them again. I'm going to say this. So do you think that God wants a whole bunch of Davids to go to go to, to, to go? Like, how about this? Does God want a whole bunch of Davids to live in polygamy and sleep with Bathsheba's? And that's OK because David was in that situation. Come on, bro. No. That was a specific situation that God was trying to show Israel. Like He was trying to show the prophet Hosea how he felt about Israel. God, God, you are not Hosea. I'm going to say this right now. You are not Hosea and you are not David. You're supposed to learn from Hosea and learn from David. What was the lesson from Hosea? That Israel was committing adultery on God, fornicating, worshiping false gods. So God is not telling you to go marry a woman who's going to commit adultery on you or man who's going to commit adultery on you because you're the prophet Hosea. Stop. That's not what God is telling you. You're supposed to learn from that. Come on, family. 
We're in a new dispensation where we're baptizing the Holy Ghost and we're, enter, we're able to enter the holies of holies. Yes, God hates divorce, but, there's, but, but you need to separate and you need to pray. And I'm telling you right now, if you pray and you say, God, handle it, something's going to happen. But God does not want us living in, the, in, 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 living in that type of toxic environment, a toxic atmosphere. If you're getting cheated on, you need to separate. Separation is not divorce. And you need to pray and God will move. Either that, either that person is going to change and, and repent and come to Christ for real. Or that person is going to leave that is going to leave you. Regardless, God's going to handle it. But God does not want that. Man, I'm telling you, God, God does not want you to be getting cheated on. I'm going to say this right now. God does not want you to be in adultery in a, in a marriage just sitting there getting cheated on. No, he hates divorce. Yes, he does. But I'm telling you right now. Separation is better than divorce. Pray. If you if you feel led by the spirit to separate or the person feels led by the spirit to separate. And just pray and not get divorced. Because look, the Bible says you're allowed to divorce, right? Through sexual morality. But if you feel like, 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 look, I don't even want to divorce. I want to pray. I want to make sure. I want to make sure that this is God. And you pray and you fast. And, you know, I've seen people do this. I've seen women of God who are being cheated on by their husband. Separate. And I've heard testimonies of them praying for their husband for years. While he was all up in the clubs, cheating, became a crackhead, all types of stuff. And the man came up, came back around 10, 15 years later, was changed, filled with the Holy Spirit, gave his life to Christ, and they're back together. I've heard of those amazing testimonial stories, but God needs to speak to you about that. But guess what? These women separated, though. They took the children out of that in environment because it'll pass on to the children. They took they took themselves out of the, out, of, out of that environment and they and they consecrated themselves to the Lord. They didn't go marry. They didn't divorce. They didn't go cheat. They just stayed with the Lord, celibate, waiting. But then I've also met people where they did that. They separated from their husband or their wife, whatever it is. And within a few months, the husband or the, 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 the person cheating was like, I want, a, I want a divorce. I'm done with this. And the Bible talks about that. If they leave you, you're freed from that. So separation is always best. All right. Last one. Number six, flattery. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. Ahab susceptible Ahab loves to flatter and exposes the danger of seeking a validation and affirmation from others instead of God. So whenever someone's dealing with an Ahab spirit, they love they love flattery. They want flattery. They want the approval of people to say, "Great job. You did amazing. You're doing so good." But the minute, for example, as a pastor, right? Let me give you an example. I know that there's some pe some people in the church that are dealing with that spirit that are overcoming it, right? And they serve so 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 they serve so well in the church. They do so well in the church. They serve, they serve, they serve. But the minute I'm gonna tell you this, the minute I re I correct them, rebuke them, or something where they don't like it, they manifest and they get angry and they isolate, and they don't want to come to church now. And there they go. They 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 just they just get real rebellious. That's an Ahab spirit. That's an Ahab spirit. They get real like, 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 because, because now they're not getting that flattery, that, 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 that approval of man. And, and they, because they don't have a relationship with God, like they should, they, they, they get all, oh, I'm, I'm isolating myself. Now I'm not coming to church. I don't want to be there. And they get, they go from being super server to, I don't even want to be in the church no more. How many of y'all ever met somebody like that? Put a one in the chat. They love you. They care about you. Everything's amazing. They serve you with excellence or they, they help you. It, is, it, is, it doesn't have to even be in the church. They just love you. But then the minute you say something that they don't like and you don't flatter them, they gone. That's an Ahab spirit. That's the characteristic of an Ahab spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah, my spiritual father once told me this. He said, he said I, was, I was talking to them about a situation. He said, Richard, he said, you can, you can't ever change somebody. He said, you can't change them. Only God can. And I knew this, but it was so simple, but so revelatory. It just penetrated my spirit. And I said, wow. So sometimes God is telling you to separate yourself. Come out from among them because they're not changing. And God is telling you, separate yourself and pray. Pray and ask the Lord. To handle it. 
But God, God is not always say, God is not saying pray and stay in that toxicity, stay and stay, stay in that pray and stay in that atmosphere. No, God is calling you to come out from among them. If they don't want to repent and they don't want to get delivered, if they don't want to no, like love does not mean association. I'm going to say it again. I want everyone to comment that in the chat. Love does not mean association. Amen, Lioness777. She said, thank you for this word today. I'm separating myself. Glory be to God. Everyone put in the chat, love does not mean association. You can love someone from a distance. But look, if you're dealing with that Ahab spirit or that Jezebel spirit, and you know you do, and you're in a toxic relationship, you need to separate yourself and fall in love with Jesus Christ so that you are not operating in that spirit. And you need to not only pray for them, you need to pray for yourself. You need to go through a process of healing and deliverance before you could even consider being in that relationship again. Please, my brothers and sisters, not only do not only not only should we discern what others are dealing with, but we should look in the mirror. That's for me, too. A snake biting you means witchcraft. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to. um, And I was just answering a question from somebody. What we're going to do right now is we're going to um, I want to I want to ask this question first. All right. How many of you guys just be straight up and real? Just be real. How many I'm, I'm watching the chat. How many of y'all? Are in a girlfriend boyfriend relationship put a one in the chat how many y'all are in a girlfriend boyfriend relationship put a one in the chat put a one in the chat and if you're watching this later you can go ahead you go ahead go ahead and put a one too dang that's a lot of ones man what's up with y'all What's wrong with y'all? Yeah, courting is completely different than dating. If you if you understand courting, that means you're in you're in you're in God's will. I'm talking about if you're in a girlfriend boyfriend relationship. This is crazy. This is good though. This is good. That means we're gonna get right. Amen. We're gonna get right. All right. So I'm gonna preach this word to you. You're probably not gonna like it but it might save your life in Christ, okay? It might save your soul. And look, someone said one same-sex same, same sex relationship. Look, same, look, I tell people all the time who are, who, are, who are dealing with homosexuality, I say, if you follow the word of God and you think you're gay and you think you're supposed to be like that, then why, why, don't, why don't you wait for marriage anyways? You see, most people that are dealing with homosexuality, they can't wait till marriage because they're dealing with the Jezebel spirit. So they need perversion. They need the Ahab. They need that. So they can't wait till marriage. They Jezebel don't want to repent. But yes, homosexuality is demonic. It's, it's wrong. You need to get deliverance. For real. I'm just saying this in love, love and truth and grace. I ain't going to sit here and try to sugar, sugarcoat it. If I, if I, I, w I would want to be spoken to the same way. You need to get deliverance. It's a demon that's operating. You're not gay. I don't care what you feel in your flesh. God can deliver you and make you not feel that no more. How do I know this? Because I used to feel like I needed alcohol. I used to feel like I needed a whole bunch of sex with women. I used to feel that. I used to try in the world. I would try to get stop doing those things and it wouldn't work because I had demons. But when I came to Christ, God delivered me from all that. I used to feel like I, I used to I, I needed to watch porn every day. So if God can deliver me from that, he can deliver you too. same sex, opposite sex don't matter. Pornia, sexual perversion is the same thing. The person watching porn, the person in a girlfriend, boyfriend relationship, fornicating and the homosexual are all dealing with the same category, the same umbrella, sexual immorality, pornity, no difference. Just saying. That's usually what happens is it, this, that spirit of Jezebel will pass down generationally and keep getting stronger. It'll go from the, the, the husband that commits adultery on the wife. Then it goes down to the children. Now the children go through the same thing, but now the woman gets super gets super rebellious and now likes the same sex. Then passes it down to her daughter who thinks that they're born, right? 
liking the same sex. No, they were born, but then a demon generationally was imparted into them to pervert them and make them think in their mind at 10 years old that they're homosexual. No, they're not. It's a spirit, unfortunately, that's been imparted since they were a baby because of a generational curse. But guess what, woman or man of God? God has called you from heaven to come down here and break that curse in that bloodline. Are you going to do it or are you going to complain? And are, are you going to keep saying that you're gay? You got a choice. You got a choice. I used to, bro, if y'all knew me in the world, I, I used to, do, I accepted the fact I was going to drink for the rest of my life. I could not give it up. I'm being real with y'all. I was a whole full-blown alcoholic. I, I, I could never imagine myself being with one woman. I used to cry in the world at night. Sit, cry. Nobody knows this. I used to cry right? Tough guy. I would cry because I'd be like, bro, I'm never going to be able to be faithful to one woman. I was not faithful to one woman, even though it was fornication and it was whatever. I was not faithful to one woman the entire time I was in the world before coming to Christ. Every single girl that I was ever with, I cheated on. And I'm not just talking about one time. I'm talking about I regularly cheated on. I never lived in a faithful relationship since the day I lost my virginity. I'm just being straight up. So if God can take me from being a porn addict, a, 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 a player pimp, a, a whole messed up Jesse and, and Leviathan and deliver me. And, I, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this again. I boast in Christ by his grace and my obedience. I have not since I've been saved. Since I've been saved. December 1st, 2019. Since I've been saved. I have never watched pornography. And I have not cheated on my wife. I don't even want to look at girls for more than one or two, two seconds. If a girl's walking by, I'm foop, foop, at the gym, foop, at the mall. Foop, no, it ain't happening. And I thank God for deliverance ministry because he brought us straight. He shot us straight into to, to deliverance ministry. We got delivered and started seeing demons casted out. And it really made us realize, oh, shoot, this is real. This is real. That's what woke me up. Deliverance ministry, the children's bread. Once we started seeing demons getting casted out regularly from people and we saw how real it was and started seeing spiritual things happening in our homes. And it, it started God started opening up our spiritual eyes where we were seeing demons and angels and having crazy encounters. Oh, yeah, it got real. That Then then I was like, thank you, Jesus. I ain't going back to it. <laughs> That's why I don't go back to it. I have the, I have the fear of the Lord. I know when I rebel against God, I'm opening up the door for demons. That's why I don't go back to it. I love Jesus Christ and I fear him. I have reverence to God. Without his protection, if I go into a rebellious state, I'm gone, bro. I'm straight. The only reason that I expose witchcraft, talk about things that most ministers won't talk about, do the things that most ministers won't do is because I live a lifestyle of purity. That's the only reason. By the grace and the by the grace of God and my discipline partnering together in a, in a relationship, I'm able to walk this walk out like this. Y'all see the things I expose. Y'all see the things I do. It's because of obedience, of holiness, purity. I believe that we need to walk in it, man. So for all the people who put a one because you got a girlfriend and boyfriend, you got you, you have a decision to make. I hope everyone makes this decision, but at the end of the day, you got free will. All I can do is invite you to freedom, but just like I can invite you to Jesus, I can only invite, I can't force you. I'm saying this with love. You need to stop dating. You need to cut that person off. I'm going to say this right now. You need to find a church. You need to find a pastor. You need to find a covering. You need to grow in Christ. You need to become a man or woman of God and you need to have a deep relationship with God before you even consider courtship. If you don't even know what courtship means, you shouldn't even be dating until you understand it. Let me say this. The other person needs to be saved and needs to be like like ready for courtship themselves before y'all even consider it straight up. So if right now you know that you're in rebellion, let's let's so I'm going to explain it very simple. If you're dating and you know that person's not saved, you're in rebellion. If you're dating and you know you don't have a covering of church, a pastor who who could 
pray for you and confirm to you if that's supposed to be your wife or husband, if God hasn't confirmed it to you, if you have not got confirmation that that's your wife or husband, you're in rebellion. If you're dating and you don't even see the person as your wife or husband for real, for real, you're in rebellion. If you're dating the same sex, you're in rebellion. If you're in fornication with that person, sleeping with them, you're in rebellion. So based off of what I just said, for the most part, I might be leaving out a few such scenarios, but based off of what I said, how many people know that right now they're in rebellion? Put a three in the chat so I can see it. Put a three in the chat if you know you're in rebellion. Y'all can be real, man. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of threes, bro. Wow. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. So that's that three. All right. Now, that's a lot of threes. All right. I think that's probably like 40 and it's still going. All right. Now, this is my, my next question for all the people who put a three in the chat. All right. Who in here is truly ready to repent and cut that person off? Because I'm going to tell you all something. Rebellion is as witchcraft. So you are operating in witchcraft. You are no different from the witch and warlock who's operating in witchcraft. You are in rebellion against God, the highest power. You are welcoming demons in your home and in your life and in your temple. You need to repent and get delivered and healed. So out of all those threes, if you're truly ready to repent, and I'm talking, when I say repent, it means cut that person off completely. Shoot them one last text message. I have a brother in Christ. His name is Isaiah Salvador. And his testimony, you should go watch it. When he came to Christ, God, like he knew he was in rebellion, dating a girl. He shoot her. He shot, he was, I think he dated her for like six years or something. He shot her a text message and said, we're done. And that was it. He didn't try to go meet up with her. He didn't try to call her, try to wean off and just slowly. No, he said, I'm done because he had an encounter with Jesus. He heard the voice of God. He ended it completely. And I think a few years later, he, God audibly spoke to him about who his wife was. And now he's married with a bunch of, a bunch of beautiful children, beautiful girls, anointed, so some of y'all, this is your story. If you know that you're ready to cold turkey, send that last text message to them. Real simple. God bless you. I'm turning to God. I'm done. Um, I can't talk to you no more. Seek God for yourself. God bless you in Jesus name. If you're ready to do that, and I'm talking about no reply, no answering phone calls, no trying to, oh, let's go to church together. No, if they're going to go to church, they're going to go on their own. There's many churches out there. If you're truly ready to say, I'm done and get deliverance and healing, I'm going to pray for you right now. And if that's you, if you're ready to do that truly, and don't, don't put, don't, don't put nothing in the chat. If you're not ready, okay, don't do it. Be real with yourself. If you're not ready, you're not ready. It is what it is. Maybe God got to allow certain things to happen to you so that you get ready. But if you're ready and this message convicted you and you're ready to repent, put a five in the chat. Put a five. Put a five in the chat. Because God's grace is going to abound right now and deliver you. Put a five in the chat if you're ready. If that's you, let's count up the fives. Okay. That's about 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, 25. So we got about 30. Praise God. I mean, that's a lot of people. I think only a few people weren't ready. All right, good. So this is what you're going to do. I'm going to pray for you and you're going to, you're, I want you to repeat after me out of your mouth. Okay, we're going to, what we're doing right now is we're defeating that Jezebel spirit. Some of you are either Ahab die or you got a Jezebel, whatever. But right now, through your repentance, that spirit or spirits is about to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right. So let's get it. I want you all to just relax. I want you all to repeat, repeat after me. If you put that five in the chat, I want you to say, Jesus. I'm done. 
Say, I repent of rebellion. I repent of fornication. I repent of witchcraft. Say, Jesus, deliver me from every Jezebel spirit or Ahab spirit or anything else. Say, Jesus, forgive me for sinning against you. And say, Jesus, thank you for your blood. Say, Jesus, I'm ready to take it further in my relationship with you. And say, in Jesus' name, amen. I want, if, if, if that was you that just repeated that out loud, I want you to close your eyes now, put your phone down, just listen to my voice, and I'm going to pray for you. I want you to just focus your heart on Jesus, okay? I'm going to pray for you. And you're going to get delivered right now. The power of the Holy Ghost is going to hit you. Demons are going to come out. You might throw up, cough up, cry. You might start shaking, fall out, whatever it is. The Holy Spirit's going to hit you the way he needs to hit you to get them demons out and for you to be freed, all right? So in Jesus' name, close your eyes and just receive. I command right now in the name of Jesus Christ, every demonic spirit of Jezebel and Ahab to come up and come out. I bind you with a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. I command every demon in their temple to be bound right now. You cannot move in the arms, the legs, anywhere else in the temple. You're bound and cannot move. You're tied up with a threefold cord. And I command, command you and any other spirit that you came in with on the count of three to come up and come out and go straight to the bottomless pit. You will not enter any other vessel. You will not linger on the on, on, in the spirit realm. You will not linger on this earth. In the name of Jesus, you will go straight to the abyss, the bottomless pit. On the count of three, one, two, three, up and out in the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out in the name of Jesus Christ. All the way up. All the way up. Come up and come out now in the name of Jesus. Put your stomach where, you, I mean, put your hand where you're feeling it. Some of you might feel it on your stomach, your head, your, your, your chest. Put your hand there, your right hand. Right now, wherever they're putting their hand, every demon come up and come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and come out now and go to the pit. Come up and come out now and go to the pit in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave their bodies. Leave their bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave their souls in the name of Jesus Christ. I send fire through the, whole, through, the, through the temple. Holy Ghost, fire through the temple in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything on their neck, on their back, on their head, I bind you and I command you to come up and out and offer them in Jesus' name. Go to the pit. Go to the bottomless pit in the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua, go to the pit right now in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Everything be bound. Lord, I pray that you loose angels to war for them, Lord. Loose angels to war and minister to them, Lord. May your spirit, Lord, Holy Spirit, may you fill every area of their temple where every demon's coming out. It's an eviction notice. Every demon come up and come out now in Jesus' name. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave. Everything go. Fear go. Fear go. Fear go in Jesus' name. Witchcraft go in the name of Jesus Christ. Pride, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Lust, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Every altar of bow be shattered in Jesus' name. Every spirit of seduction, come up and come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything come up and come out now. I bind every devil, command you to come up and come out now in Jesus' name. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, up and out now in Jesus' name. Fire through the body, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King Jesus. Every demon come up and come out now in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you just felt freedom, like literally you felt freedom. I want you to put your testimony in the chat right now. You might have coughed up. You might have thrown up. You might have cried, spit up, whatever just happened. I want you to put exactly what just happened to you in the chat so we can see the testimonies. Hallelujah. Put it in the chat. Glory be to God. And I'm going to say this, some of y'all might need to come. Some of y'all might need to come. Someone spit up, yawn like crazy. I felt a weight off of me. Fire came into my body, burning in my stomach. I sweated, cried, head pain is gone. I threw, I throw, I threw up. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this, some of y'all might need to come. Might need to come to a Saturday to Central Florida. If you can't come to, to Central Florida on Saturday, join us online. Join us online. 
Join us online. But yeah, if you can, get your ticket and come pull up. I know some of you are younger, you can't afford it, or some of you just can't afford it in general. It's okay. Join us online. That's why we do the online services to bless you guys that can't make it. But if you can make it in person, I'm telling you, come get hands laid on you. We're going to be praying for people. It's going to be crazy. Someone said I, I was screaming and I, I screamed, felt something lift off. Chills in my body. My head feels light. Pain surged through my back and got stuck in throat until I coughed out. I felt a sense of relief and I was shaking. I felt it in my chest. Hallelujah. Look, at that's the freedom of the Lord. I can only do, do, do through so much through the Internet. I know the Holy Spirit is all powerful, all knowing. But man, it's something about laying hands. I'm telling you, he can deliver you where you at for sure, for sure. Hallelujah. Man, the Lord is good. Let me check the live stream. I want y'all to start smashing that like button. Go ahead. Start smashing that like button. Go ahead. Smash it. Start running up fire emojis, man. That was crazy. Start. I want y'all to start running up fire emojis. Start running up the fire emojis. Come on. Just checking my phone real quick to see where. Okay, we are 705. Praise the Lord. All right. Man, God is good. Again, I'm exposing Jezebel all week. We got the Jezebel, Jesus over Jezebel uh, shirts. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at all those fire emojis. What I'm going to do right now, guys, my brothers and my sisters, look, I'm going to be straight up. We are saving for a church. We are going to get our own warehouse. We've been in ministry for about two and a half years. The ministry is growing quickly here locally in Central Florida. People are leaving their hometowns and coming to move here with their families. It's beautiful. God is moving mightily and we want to we want to we want the online service in person to just be better. So I'm just asking you guys to partner with us. All right. Partner with us. Um, sowing a tithe, an offering, first fruit, whatever you the Lord puts on your heart to the ministry. It does go straight towards the ministry for us to be able to expand it. We are all about soul winning. We are all about expanding the kingdom and glorifying Jesus Christ. Y'all already know this. Y'all see the, the, the social medias. This is what we do. So by you sowing onto this, you're sowing onto God through this ministry. And the Bible says how you how you give is how he'll give back to you. Very simple. And the way that you need, not what you want, God will come. He will come back and do it with joy because you believe in his word. All right. So I'm going to give you all an opportunity to give and I'm going to come right back and then I'm going to um, pray us out and then um, talk about some more things that we got coming up soon. God bless you all. I'm going to give you all an option to sow onto the ministry. And thank you for all those who give and partner with us. God bless.
What's up, family? Can you guys hear me? Put a fire emoji if you guys can hear me. Come on. Put a fire emoji if you guys can hear me. There's a few announcements. There's a few announcements, guys. A few announcements. Um, Number one, we got service tonight here at The Rock in Central Florida. If you guys can come back, um, come through. Come through. It's going to be powerful. If you cannot join us in person, join us online. Also, if you guys want to partner with us, um, uh, well, not partner, but join us in fellowship digitally, we have the, the Leadership School of Revival where you guys can join. I do I do weekly teachings. I know I know this week I'm doing exposing Jezebel every day, but I can't go live every day. I got a lot of stuff going on. This is just a commitment onto what the Lord wants me to do. But if you want to learn and you want to grow to become a, a mighty revivalist in your your hometown or city, and you know operate in power and the and also the fruit of the spirit, becoming like Jesus every day more and more like Jesus relationship, join the LSOR. We also have the um, the ROC International, which is an online community. We got over 4,000 people. You guys can join. Everything is in the description of the videos on YouTube. You can click those links. What else we got? Again, this Saturday is going to be fire, man. I'm telling you, try to come in person. It's going to be powerful. I'm excited. I can't wait for this Saturday. Um, Dallas also. We have Dallas um, Revival. If you're in the DFW area or like nearby and, you know, maybe Florida is too far, but Dallas is closer for you. April 19th, 20th, and 21st in Dallas, Prayer Mountain. That's actually where my spiritual father's church is, where, you know, my covering. I'm going to be preaching on the mountain. It's going to be powerful. My brother, um, Pastor Mario, it's going to be a, it's going to be a powerful revival. If you're near Dallas area, come through, come pull up. The, uh, the tickets are free. Go on Eventbrite and get a ticket just so we know who's coming. I think we got about 2,000 people, about 2,000 people who have signed up already. So it's going to be crazy. My um, my spiritual um, father, he actually built an outdoor amphitheater on the mountain. So it's going to be a powerful revival. Make sure y'all come through. What else we got? Oh, yeah. Sanctify the EP. If you like Christian music, Christian rap specifically, I just dropped an EP. And there's a bunch of other EPs out there that y'all can go see. Go um, stream that. It's called Sanctified. And you can look it up on all music platforms. My artist name is the same name, Richard Lorenzo Jr., my regular government name. Go check it out. We got a bunch of Holy Spirit filled bangers. Hey, if you if you downloaded Sanctified and you and and you rock with the EP, I want you to put a fire emoji. Come on. If you if you rock with that EP, and we got some other EPs out there like International, The Last Hour. We got some singles. I got a lot more music coming out. We're constantly dropping constantly dropping new music. I got some powerful features on some songs that y'all gonna really enjoy, man. Um, from other ministries, I just been waiting on that. Um, just to make sure that the Lord wants me to do that. So just make sure you guys go check it out. Go download the Sanctified EP. Again, on all music platforms. I can go check out also, if, for those that don't know, I have a, um, a music vid, like a music channel, like for YouTube. It's called Remnant Music Records, RMR. And you guys can go check it out. Um, Diana said, I don't even like rap music, but the EP is honestly fuego. The more I listen to it, the more I like it. Praise God. because It's real, look. I'm not sitting here saying I'm the best music artist. I didn't really start doing any type of music till I came to Christ because I got a word prophesied over me. And I'm going to take that word and run with it. I, I, I got faith, right? I believe in the Lord when he speaks. But you can, you can say this. When it comes to the music that I put out, it's authentic. It's real. I'm not lying about what I say. I'm not. But in the world, they call it rap capping. You know, in the world, there's a lot of um, rappers who will rap about certain things that they don't do. They're lying. That's what capping means, lying. So they rap cap. They'll say, oh, I do all these things like I sell drugs and I kill and I murder and I simply but they don't even do none of that. They're, they're like they're just like regular people, but they're just doing it for 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 streams and for views. Well, we take it that we take that to the kingdom. It's the same thing. There's a lot of rap artists or musicians that will say that will that will make music for the Lord, but they don't even worship him. Their heart is far from him. They can rap about the Lord, make worship music for the Lord. And it's all cap. A lot of rap cappers in the kingdom. You can feel it. There's a difference between gifts and the anointing. You can be super gifted. There's a lot of people who honestly, I'm going to say this for real. I'm going to be real. Who come to the body of Christ to make rap music for, you know, make rap music because they know it's a, it's a, it's an open field. It's, they, they, there's not as much competition as the world. So they, they only come here for that, but they don't even love the Lord. They don't even care about them. 
And you can feel it in the music. You're just like, man, I don't like this. This, this. I don't feel the anointing. But let me tell you something. Any type of music for the Lord where it's truly for the Lord, either Christian rock, Christian rap, Christian bachata, Christian salsa, Christian reggae, Christian reggaeton, Christian whatever, worship, you can literally feel the anointing. You can literally feel the anointing. Just like some worship songs, you feel, you hear it, it sounds good well produced well engineered but you don't feel the anointing you're like god you ain't on this your power ain't on this and remember the anointing breaks the yoke so i might not be the most gifted artist i know this but i know i'm anointed i know when you listen to my music you're gonna feel the you're gonna feel the presence of god and the power of god and i have a lot of testimonies of people being discipled through the music being delivered and healed i know that for show for show so I'm not tripping and God's only going to get, he's only going to teach me more. The Holy Spirit's only going to continue to to help me get better and better because it's all for his glory. I do the music. I literally do the music straight up for souls. I want to win souls. I want people to get out of that worldly music because it's so demonic. And I want people to come over to the good side, the kingdom side. And I, I'm, I'm man, we got some powerful artists in our own ministry that are about to be putting out a lot more music soon too. And man, I can't wait till the Lord continues to send more and more artists to this ministry and other ministries who are going to rise up and be truly anointed by the Lord. Truly anointed. So I love y'all, man, for real. God bless y'all. Salute my soldiers. For all those who repented, I pray that you really go out there, like really make that, really cut that person off and get right with the Lord so that Jezebel and Ahab's spirit will come out your life. And this Saturday, man, is going down. It's going down. I can't wait. It's going to be a Holy Ghost party. We're probably going to be here till like one in the morning for real. It's going to be crazy. So make sure to pull up if you can. Get your hotel, all that. Airbnb, car, all that. God bless y'all. I love y'all in Jesus' mighty name. Y'all take care and keep myself, my family, and the ministry in prayer for all those prophetic intercessors, prayer warriors. Keep us in prayer this week because obviously the enemy don't like what I'm doing, but God loves it. So prayer is power. Make sure you pray for us. God bless in Jesus' name.